I think it's really marvelous to seeing this current situation that in China, that so many protests has happened, well, national wide. And a lot of masses that they're using art, a form of almost like art performance is quite stunning. Uh, one of that is particularly the use of the blank sheet of paper. So now we actually have a name of the whole environment uh, in uh, campaign, which we call the A4 revolution. A4 is referring to this blank sheet of paper. So in China, it's highly risky to protest for whatever reason. And anything that you put on your sign, the protest, can be used for the persecution lately. So the young generation here is just using a white sheet of paper without writing anything, but simply using the gesture to holding the paper in the sky. Even though there's no specific message on those paper, but just the action, the courage that bring them to the streets is strong enough to saying they are demanding more than just being treated under this very brutal zero COVID lockdown. Yeah. What have you learned from people in China that you've been speaking to about how they view these protests and what they're trying to accomplish? Well, I think it's really um, because all these three years of very harsh uh, zero COVID policy that pushing the limitation of how much the Chinese people can really take, especially for the younger generation. There are a lot of moving videos that appearing um, from the uh, front line of the protest. A lot of young generation are saying they cannot see their future. They don't feel they have a future in this country if this kind of government, if this kind of a policy continues. So really what they want is a change uh, in the entire environment. It, it might be you know, very specific um, demanding, which is ending um, the current COVID control. But for more, they are as actually asking for more. Uh, for some protests, like in Shanghai and other cities, we even hearing the impossible uh, chanting like uh, China's Communist Party stepping down, Xi Jinping stepping down. So this is not just uh, a protest against certain policy. This is something more fundamental. This is asking for universal human rights there. Yeah, and some have almost described it as a political awakening for many people. But you talk about the difficulty of protests and how hard it is to do that in China, to be public about your opposition. Another prominent artist, Ai Weiwei, has said this is not going to go anywhere. The police are going to crush this movement. Do you agree? Well, this is what Chinese government are always trying to do. Usually that we have this three-step message. So firstly, they would forbidden people to exchange opinion freely. We've seen police uh, in the city like Shanghai are checking personal device like phones on the street just to see if they have VPN or um, you know the apps they don't supposed to have, which will be just Twitter or Telegram or WhatsApp. Then the second step that they will do is smear the campaign, um, you know, polluting the message and saying this is not a spontaneous reaction from the Chinese people, but being manipulated by so-called the foreign force. And the third thing is when they control the narrative uh, and and you know completely insert their propaganda, they will launch uh, the the cracking down, possibly violent cracking down, but. But because of that, you know, by the time they've already had the narrative and sort of legitimize uh, the possible cracking down. Yeah. You've already created some works for these protests. Tell us about them. Well, I've been following the development from the very beginning um, since uh, the Ulumuchi protest. So I, I did a, a work that is um, you know, dedicating to the Ulumuchi protest, but also Shanghai's protest that are echoing uh, with the demonstration there and memorizing uh, some of the victims died because of fire and th this fire cannot be put out due to uh, the the very absurd methodology of COVID control. You know, the fire engines couldn't enter the community. And also I'm uh, working on projects like uh, dedicating to this blank paper uh, protest and a lot of art is creating around that scene as well. Yeah, that would be great to see. Now, you, ironically, you are in Brussels. You've, you're going to be opening this exhibition that also deals with the COVID zero policy. What are you trying to say with this exhibition? What is the message you're wanting to get to the world? 
Well, before um, we uh, starting this exhibition, I never expect that the situation in China will grow so rapidly. Um, but obviously, the zero COVID policy and the problem of it is always a theme uh, for the China's human rights issues for a long time. So that's why the poster and the entire scene of the show has a lot to do with pointing out China's uh, misconducting and, and terror policy, you know, with this zero COVID thing. Um, but also, I think it's a very uh, good opportunity that I can bring those art, bring those stories from the streets in China uh, to the politicians to the big communities of European Union, that letting them know what is going on and also asking their help and asking their support to the people back in China. Yeah. Do you get the sense that that more we saw, you know, Rishi Sunak saying, you know, that that their policies are going to change. There is pushback from a number of other countries. Do you think people are starting? Other countries realise that they can't just follow China just because of its, you know, its economy and what that brings to countries. Well, that's exactly right. I think it's very important more and more countries should realize it is very toxic to depending on a economy with no rule of law, with no respect to democracy and the people as well. In the longer term, it will only harming and hunting all of us outside of China. Um, for the European country, yes, and also for Australia, definitely. Yeah, really good to, um, to chat to you and uh, good luck with the exhibition. Thank you very much.